Okay, so we've done the holes, they all line up perfectly. Uh, and now I've taken the, uh, the little rib nut inserts and I've put some molding um, putty or clay in there. And uh, they all got filled now. Now I'm going to uh, put the adhesive in there, put the rib nuts in, line everything up again. Once everything's perfect, we're then going to do two or three layers of carbon fiber over that just to give it some good old fashioned luck. to see how tight it is in there i'm sure if i took the bottle out it'd be easier but just bearing in mind this is a trial fit so i don't really want to go strip everything so all i'm going to do is hustle around until i get them in and you can see the anti-torpedo uh, brackets mount on top of the actual bracket and you can see down there where the um six millimeter with the hardened uh, aluminium countersunk washer sits and obviously you got to try and get on the back side of that thing and get that in as well so yeah no one said it would be easy but no one said it'd be this difficult either so let's see where we end up Woo! yo guys that was not fun that was a lot of more work than i expected it to be actually mounting the holes wasn't the end of the world that was quite easy um but having to get these bad boys in here between the bulkhead <laughs> and there you can see how tight it is and obviously we always knew it'll be tight and then oh, you can see over here excuse the dodgy camera there's all mounted and obviously now that has to all come out again it's terrible but we have to take it out so that we can um Put a couple of layers of carbon on top of that so nothing pulls out the last thing we want is an accident to happen or something like that and then everything pops out uh -huh. okay guys so you want to know how we get in there and this is when i really really love our design process is i was watching this oh look at that perfectly in there can work we ever need to work on <laughs> pedals whatever we end up sitting with so yeah, a oh, little bit tight, but nothing better than when the design works out. Okay, so obviously we're in. I now got to run this um, cable, but obviously we don't want this thing to kink anyway. And we also don't want it to be in the way that if the driver's getting in and out, he's kicking it and potentially damaging it. So we've got to be quite careful here how we do that. And we're going to run it 
right up to there so it'll probably run something to that effect um, uh, and into there and just so that we don't get anything caught all right so we've found the root i got caleb to quickly sit in here and just check what worked for him and uh, that's the mark in there that's where we'll cut it so all i'm going to do is because if you see this is the well if you see this is the the cable length here and that's how much sticks out so that must be i don't know 12 centimeters 120 mil so i'm just going to pull this piece out equivalent by that so that i know that's kind of where we are so we'll do the whole me we'll do all the measurements now and then once i've measured up where we need to be i'm then going to pull this piece out completely and then cut this last piece down so yeah let's get to it There's the connection. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of play in there. You don't want it too tight that you're unable to pull the pin out. So you want to have a little bit of movement there. There's the hose. It loops there. It loops back. And it loops up to our lever here. And obviously our lever's got a little bit of play to it it should have and that's it that's what we look like all right so i've put the steering back in i've given myself a little bit extra space to work here the uh, canister is now mounted and you can see i've raised this uh, nozzle just a little bit higher just so that if i do need to turn yeah that i've got space to turn also the idea is maybe to mount on directly onto this so you know kind of use this to to hold the the um, piping uh, plugging in place and um, the reason I put the wheel back in was because on the back of this um, um, bush that we machined here is a little um, a little what eight mil screw section here I can't see it I'll have to get in there and show you and so basically what we need to do is try and somehow get onto that piece and point it towards the driver so we kind of want the spray if we're sitting inside the car to go boom like this onto uh, you know onto the driver and so we're going to be mounting it there then I have to root it up again root it up the side of the firewall or the rollover bar sorry and then um, probably up here so we can neatly tuck it yeah I mean this is solid carbon this is solid so we can just route it through the firewall there, coming out, and then just run it nice and neatly underneath here. Um, and then run it all the way, uh, drill a hole through here, and then run it through there into the rear compartment. And then from there, we'll have a bulkhead uh, connection here. And then from here, it will then run out into the engine bay area so that's kind of the idea of what we're going to do so driver fuel zone area and then obviously where the most likely area of a fire occurring is right here and so this will be where we're going to probably have the two nozzles facing down or so forth we're not sure yet we'll find out and then um where the exhaust manifold comes out obviously the oil is there that can also cause quite a big fire so we'll have an oil shield 
on the exhaust itself so that if there is anything that blows up or explodes or whatever ends up happening hopefully nothing then that oil won't get on the exhaust and cause a fire either so that's for now the action plan and that's what we're going to do and then we'll hopefully um you know kind of get it going i'm not sure what i'm going to use to create the holes and just the the channels through here ideally i'd like to use carbon but i didn't go obviously make up the carbon and it is a lot of work but you know work is work so let's see where we end up <laughs> So I just put some end on the hose there and then I'm just going to feed it up there. I don't know if you can see it there, a little hole we drilled. And that will come out in the top section over there. Uh, and then obviously that section there will be filled, completely closed, so that we don't have any... Um, Kind of air holes more than anything linking the two because we're using a nitrolene um, hose in the back so we get the flexibility i don't want any any holes poking through and for those of you that are a little bit worried this will all be just given a very light sand not major sand and then we're going to clear coat the inside here and then give it a flat sand again so once this tub's finished we'll have the shine and gliss and gleams that one would expect from carbon fiber Alright guys, so 
again, excuse the angle because it is extremely difficult to get up there. But you can see where we've rooted the, the hose lines. Nothing's touching yet along the bulkhead. And then the bracket will come off of that um, M9 piece there and then hold it in place there. It will be a little bit higher, obviously, but that's kind of what it looks like. Then we're, I'm just going to test one of those um, cable tie adhesive sections there. So that's one nozzle done. Four more to go. So now that's in there, we're going to run that hose back. So one hose will go in here now, obviously, and then the other hose is going to come out. I'm just going to quickly do some research and find out where it's best to mount, if it's best to mount higher up or lower down. My initial gut feel is it's probably better to mount it up higher. Uh, you know, fire comes up from the bottom. If there's an oil spill or petrol spill in here it's likely just to combust anyway so definitely coming down coming down and then this bulkhead hose will come through here and then mount here or you know i'm kind of thinking maybe just come through the center here out here clap it there spray down because the air box is going to be cheapest right in front and this is the most likely place for failure is this airbox. So come out, mount it on to the directly uh, facing the airbox, or just mount it even against the tub facing. So mount it here, kind of facing directly towards the airbox. And then the last one will be mounted somewhere in the back. So yeah, let me have a think about it to then carry on. that's left behind table is a disaster but you know what it just is what it is so let's run through what we've done we took some brackets and just put some releasing tape on that then I took some leftover bits and pieces of carbon fiber you can see there those are like little cut pieces all over laid it up this is about sure what, two millimeter thick and I'll show you that it's giving quite a bit of force and it's rigid it's definitely not going to flex and the reason for that is I put a nice thick 400 gram weave on the back of this thing so bikes on the back some Aquarius in the front 
and that's what I started with. You can see, then I marked them, kind of gave it the shape I was looking for. Then I cut them, ground them a little bit, probably five minutes to do everything. So yeah, so how's this bracket going to work now? It's going to work like this, one way, one's going to go this way, another's going to go that way, and this will now mount on the inside of the tub, like on top there, and then this section here is where I'm going to mount the nozzle, and that will face downwards, then I can adjust it up, down, left, right, so yeah, so that's what we're going to do now, and then, um, moment of truth to kind of show you guys thought pattern so zero so these are the two brackets that I bought to use so that's about 190 grams and obviously these are much smaller but that's how we made them and those are 12 grams so this little bracket set up here saved us probably 170 grams odd. So I think that's a productive piece of kit. Um, now I'm going to be trimming this section out here. Again, the same thing. This is going to be the nozzle holder for the um, fire extinguisher nozzle for the um, uh, underneath the steering wheel. And this originally was going to be the bracket we were going to use. So we've got away from that. Kept true to form with all the carbon. A little bit more work, but I, I think it came out cool. Alright. Quick shave down the cut. I guess I'm flexed to this one, obviously. It's just because of the design. But it's definitely not going to break. All right, so I put the put a stainless steel washer on here just to make up some bulk around where it mounts. Uh, this is now ready to go on, and it's going to go in through here and point downwards like that. And this is already good, great stuff. Just be careful when working with this not to get any dirt in these nozzles. The last thing you want now is gets clogged up, and you, when you need it, it's all blocked up. So we'll flush the system out before we finalize all the connections, but that's just a tip. One step closer. Moment of truth, let's see how that worked out. There's the steering wheel, legs going down the center, and the little bracket sitting here. And that will spray this way, all over Caleb if he needs it. And just push it all up. So yeah. It's the first one now done. These carbon fiber brackets were a little bit of a headache. I uh, probably wouldn't make them again if I'm honest. So yeah, let's see where we end up after this one.
right so that's now in and I gave it a loop around the bracket so that I can use the um, mounted nut that's in there uh, just to put a little pipe hose clamp on there and then give us some flexibility and some movement so that's not all rigid and so the actual tub is now completely hooked up and wired up and the uh, fire extinguisher or suppression system is now done and there, there's the fire suppression bottle so yeah we are getting there now the nozzle is now mounted again I gave myself quite a bit of space to play with inside there so yep one step closer